99 won the whale, Binghamton's Classic Rock Station. I am Jim Free. We are in the free zone, and I'm joined on the phone by one of my favorite comedians of all time, Lewis Black. Lewis, how are you today? Oh, just delightful. It's uh, another just a delightful day in paradise. We're really working this out. <laughs> you know, never has a country had so much and uh, and known so little. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, the joke's on us, World Tour. It's uh, coming to town Friday, February 23rd at the Broome County Forum. Uh, tickets available at the Arena Box Office and Ticketmaster Outlets. And you can get more information at lewisblack.com. How's the tour been going so far? So far, so good. I mean, it was warm where I was. <laughs> so, uh, I was Wait to get here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, we went out west, which yeah. we've never done. I mean to start the t- to start a tour, and uh, I mean in January, February, and it kind of was actually, you know, I li- like two two three days ago it was eighty degrees, and now. <laughs> yeah. Now you're are you back on the East Coast now? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, now I'm back just you know back in it. <laughs> yeah, but, we guess- but it wasn't as. I mean, I missed a lot of stuff. I got <laughs> my <laughs> yeah. friends. My friends yelling at me. Yeah. Cold and snow here, so uh, yeah. Yeah. But you're used to that. You'll be good. Uh, you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I, mean, I think everybody, you know, knows you, but if they don't, uh, take us back to the beginning. What, what made you want to become a comedian? Um, just, uh, I kind of needed, I realized if I continued being a playwright, I was writing plays and working in the theater. Huh. And I realized if I continued to do that, uh, I would, uh, starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> I was making no money, uh, and and people really part of it really was is that um, people uh, seem to have more of an affinity, you know, seem to like my my stand up, and they uh, more, you know, and they seem to be willing to pay for that. Whereas theater, even though they might have liked it, they really weren't willing to to pay enough to keep me going. But it was good. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I just didn't, and I did okay, but there was just, you know, there was never anything, you know, you, there was no health insurance. There was nothing. You know, I was going to clinics and stuff. Yeah, yeah and I totally understand that. <laughs> you know uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, working in radio, radio, I don't, radio, yeah, I don't get paid that much either. So. <laughs> really, no, you're, you know, you're, you know, boy, you guys are screwed all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. You have the uh, free clinic on speed dial, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, who were your influences when you first started out or did you yeah, because i mean your your style is really unique and uh, was there anybody that influenced you at all yeah i mean you know i mean i watched a lot of comedy so uh i mean you, you know so i watched you know from the marx brothers to to uh to Sh- we just did a memorial for him for a tribute to shelly berman who was a, oddly enough a big influence and and Jack Benny because he could pause forever mm-hmm. and get a laugh, and uh, Bob Newhart, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> George Carlin. You know, the, the major ones were Carlin, Dick Gregory, um, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor, uh, those guys. Nice. You know, Phyllis Diller, yeah. uh, Lily Tomlin. I mean, it's a kind of an endless list because I really did kind of watch all of them. I was always, I was always, I did comedy on the side like a hobby because I was fascinated by it. I never thought I'd be making a living doing this. Yeah, and, and a great living as well. Uh, you know, the the uh, specials, the tours, the the TV shows, the late night appearances. What, what if you had to pick, well, maybe not just one, but uh, what are your favorite shows to go on? I mean, I've seen you on everything from late night to uh, to cooking food with, uh, <laughs> with Kelly and Michael Strahan. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's uh, lunacy. Um, <laughs> it's too smiley. To uh, there's too many those shows. There's just too much. Hey, okay, ho ho. You know, it's just that energy that kind of drives you nuts. Uh, but what I did like, uh, I, you know, I like to I like doing uh, uh, Stephen Colbert because I know him really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like, uh, and so it's kind of fun to go on because it's just like talking to a friend or nice. Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon and I have known each other a long time. He just kind of lets me go. So I kind of come on and then he just lets me, he doesn't really ask one question. And then uh, I sit there and yell for a while. And then he asks another question. I yell for a while. We're done. Um, <laughs> you know, my, my the one I really liked, uh, w- which I really enjoyed doing, was Craig Ferguson. Okay. Uh, yeah, of, all, been... of all people, because it was really a conversation. Yeah. Um, because uh, it was, he really didn't, stay on script and he would just talk about stuff and we were just talking yeah. we literally discovered when we were both uh just when he was still drinking 
and uh, and I was really drinking. Um, that we were uh, we we lived in the same neighborhood and we're going to the same bars and it never run into each other. <laughs> <laughs> that and is we funny. did that live on the you know we did that while in the midst of a conversation. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it really. As is. opposed to you know, well, so you know, what was it like working with Doggy Doo Doo? Well, <laughs> you know, it wasn't fun. <laughs> Now again, you've been doing this uh, a long time, and it seems to just roll off the top of your head. Does it? Does it seem to? Uh, do the heart the routine seem to come easier as you've been doing it longer, or is it harder to come up with uh, new material? You know, it's harder as <clears throat> you know, as you uh, when you become a, a, you know you, when you're successful and you're on a. I have a tour bus, and uh, so all of the stuff that I used to do. That gave me material I'm now insulated from. Okay. So it's, uh, and in order to do what I'm doing, which is play three or four theaters a week, I have to do, I have to be on the tour bus. Yeah. So, uh, so that's where it becomes tougher. Then you get a, this president who really people go, well, he must be great for comedy. I said, yeah, like a stroke is good for a nap. <laughs> um, so. You know, you just so one of the things that I found that really has helped. I mean, <clears throat> I continue to read and scour stuff, and eventually, I always find, I always think, oh boy, this is it, is that nothing. And then I find stuff, and I stumble onto stuff, and then I start thinking about stuff, and it comes together. So it's sometimes it's a slower process. Sometimes it's like bam. Um, but what I've what I've done, what I do now is like I'll be in Binghamton. I'll be doing a thing after the show. I do like a twenty minute thing called the rant is due Mm -hmm. so i go out live from the theater we're at Uh, the audience can ask questions they can send in questions beforehand Uh, the folks in binghamton now can actually go to my website if they want they can find out they can start um uh you know um sending in uh rants like if there are things in binghamton that bother them i have a tendency to read about the things that i have a tendency to read are things that are going on in the, the the area i'm in okay so I kind of give people a picture of what's happening there through the people who live there. And yeah. also a lot of what I'm yelling about is stuff that, uh, you know, I'm not in an office. You know, I don't have children. Mm-hmm. I'm not, what do you, you want me to make up imaginary children? <laughs> you know, an imaginary teachers who teach my imaginary children <laughs> in my imaginary town? No. And what I found is, is that over the course of doing this for almost two, two, at least two years is that uh, uh, folks have really, uh, they're getting really good at this. So that the stuff that's coming in is really well written, really thoughtful, really smart. Okay, cool. And uh, they can send it right through your website, which is lewisblack.com. And yeah, if they go there, they can they can find out how to how to do this. Okay, cool. Uh, we're on the phone with uh, Lewis Black, who's coming to town. The Jokes on Us World Tour, Friday, February twenty third at the Broome County Forum. Uh, tickets available at the Arena Box Office, also uh, Ticketmaster dot com. Now, uh, Lewis, the, the the thing I find uh, the thing that I like most about you is like you were just saying, you you could take anything and put a different twist on it and it makes it what makes it funny is that you don't think of it that way you know like you you come up with a different take on everything and one of my favorite routines that you've ever done and i've heard a couple different versions of it is the candy corn bit (laughs) that is i play it every year right around uh halloween and uh every year i just laugh my ass off at it i mean how do you you know, like, I, I feel the same way. I think cr- candy corn tastes like crap. But, I mean, just, just the way you put your spin on it, like when you were a little kid and your mother gave it to you, I just think that that is awesome. And that's what your 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 whole routine seems to bring out is, like, well, your different Well, what's funny t- is you, you kind of, um, you know, comics find things that, uh, you know, that for me it's things that irritate me. You know, so <laughs> candy corn Valentine's Day drives me nuts. That's coming up. Yeah. Uh, you know, these things that... Uh, that I I realized nobody been t- nobody I was like you know nobody really had talked about candy corn and how how crappy it is <laughs> it's wax so, <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm left with this topic and I was going wow this is spectacular <laughs> they're giving me candy corn no you, you, know, you-, val- you know my you know and Valentine's Day like my you know in each year a little something else happens so my father my father turns a hundred. On February thirteenth. Oh wow! Yeah, so we're having a birthday party for him this 
this weekend coming up, and uh, I said, um, you know what's uh, you know you, you're turning a hundred. What do you think? And he goes, he goes, oh, he, uh, he says another Valentine's Day, really great. <laughs> so he feels the same way about the day as you do, huh? Yeah, but yeah, and my mother's ninety nine, so he's kind of going, what am I supposed to buy her this year? <laughs> That's great that your parents are both uh, still with you. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. Now uh, when. Uh, when, when, and a lot of it is just your opinion on stuff, and, and you, you do go off. Have you ever had somebody confront you with that? <laughs> like, like basically get all ticked off because you had a different opinion from them on it? I mean, I know it's comedy, so whether or not I agree with your take on, like, say, politics or whatever, I just laugh because it's, it's your opinion of it, and that's what makes it funny. But have you ever had somebody, like, you know, just come up to you and go off? No, uh, they rarely come up to me, but they'll do it in an audience sometimes. They did early on during the... The, what was it, what made uh, Trump an interesting candidate was that uh, early on people there was a backlash about him from the audience which I had not seen in all of the time I'd been working as a comic okay. and I thought you know you guys really I've yelled about every presidential candidate <laughs> this guy's off limits are you serious <laughs> are you really going to be serious about this yeah I don't know and why want to play be. and you want to play hardball about this because I know him better than you because I lived in New York City. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've been making jokes about this man for 40 years. Where do you want me to start? Which joke do you want me to start at? <laughs> so you find him. He's really interesting to you because you look at him as a TV star. Yeah. Well, he's not. He's not somebody on TV. He's a real person, you putz. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and it's like, but he talks like me. Well, that's why you're not the president. <laughs> That's a good point. And, you, you know, and the deal is, is you're supposed, you know, like it or not, I don't care. I'm, I'm old enough now. You know, all of the others at least did the minimal amount. And the minimal amount you have to be, whether you like it or not, is a role model. And he's not a role model. No. Mm-hmm. And that's what you got to be. That's You sign on for that. You don't sign on to be some schmuck. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's Louis Black. Uh, the joke's on us. World Tour, it's coming to town Friday, uh February 23rd. And uh, other than that, you have anything else planned coming down the pike? Any specials? Or? Yeah, there's a, a, um, I actually have a, a double set, uh, two specials. I have a, a, a double, uh, I have a double album out. One is a, a special that I did <coughs> just before the election on Broadway. And the other is a special that never saw the light of day called this should have been a special you idiots <laughs> and uh it, it just we never got it done you know we kept going to people nope 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 and not be just because the timing stuff and so, so finally said okay screw you so we put it out as a as a as a seat as an album and uh and then i also have a thing called uh, uh netflix I, I think it's not i don't know if it's netflix i think it's netflix i'm pretty sure uh we did a movie for them i did a movie for them with uh uh, Richard Dreyfus and Chevy Chase called the Last Laugh. Oh, okay. Which is coming out should be coming out in the the, the spring of the summer. It's pretty good. Yeah, that sound, I mean that lineup sounds awesome. I can't wait to yeah, see. Yeah, it. it was great. Yeah, sweet. All right, uh, Lewis Black. We'll let you go, man. Uh, the jokes on us. World Tour Friday, February twenty third at the Broome County Forum. Again, you can get your tickets at the Arena Box Office and Ticketmaster dot com. And uh, more information can be found at lewisblack dot com. Lewis, again, thanks for your time, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you here in a couple weeks. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it.